This is what it used to look like before. There was always audience, people were watching what was going on, medical doctors were like stars, patients were like objects, and this existed or exists for centuries in major cultural capitals around Europe. This is from Paris, mid-19th century, after the World War II, Sartre, Camille and everyone would go to the same hospital every Sunday morning to study manners. What would be the reasons for this? One reason to study cases is to see how it all began. If you have any interest in, in the beginnings, in the history of psychoanalysis, this is an excellent way to see how it can all start. What people knew then, what they didn't know, what they were helpless about, and then how they improvised and tried to figure out how to help their patients. I don't think there is a better way to study history of psychoanalysis than to study what happens with uh, differences, changes in treatment. Freud started writing case studies with the basic idea of persuading people that psychoanalysis worked. So case studies were like political pamphlets. They were supposed to show you psychoanalysis was a powerful tool, it did help people and so on and so on. So they were written not as an, as an objective type of story. They were written as a form of persuasion. Be careful when you read them, but on the other hand, many psychoanalysts have over the decades used them in order to persuade other people and use them as a sort of weapon. Freud explicitly writes that case studies were a way for him to, to test his theory. He wants us to believe, not everyone is sure about that, that he had some theoretical notion, some hypothesis, and then working with patients, tested them and changed them and improved them, hopefully. In the decades that came afterwards, many people questioned the reliability. And indeed, how we remember sessions is always very problematic. If, if you try to write down a session to the last word, you will figure out immediately how difficult it is, how you cannot remember some things, how it is not sure for you whether you remember the patient's words as well as you remember your own. Maybe you don't remember what came first and what came later, and so on and so on. Empirical studies show that if you record a session and you ask the therapist to make notes, there will be a huge discrepancy be between the recording and the notes. I, I, I guess you can figure out easily where the difference is. We tend to present ourselves as, ve as very smart, as very successful. Another point about reliability. If you ask patients to make very detailed notes, and analysts to make very detailed notes, those notes would be very different. What we remember is different from what patients remember, and so on. So, at a certain point, people realized this was not the best scientific method to study psychotherapy or psychoanalysis. And psychoanalytic case studies were considered by some people to be literature, to be short stories or novels, very interesting to read. If someone is, is such a talented stylist as Freud, a very good literature, but not science. Freud himself hated this very much. In, during the 1920s, he allegedly was a candidate for the Nobel Prize, but not for medicine, never for medicine, for literature. And in the year 1930, he won the Goethe Prize of the city of Frankfurt for literature again. And he hated it that people considered his case studies not to be scientific material. I'm sure you're aware this is a very popular, popular genre of fiction or non-fiction or somewhere in between fiction and non-fiction literature today. Some people have become very famous 
There are movies, there are novels, there are short stories. I would like to turn your attention just to two of those that are not very famous. This is probably the first one, and my favorite one, Robert Lindner's The 50-Minute Hour, published during the mid-1950s, and it gives five stories about Lindner's work mostly in prisons with persons we would today call uh, antisocial personality disorder patients, but also with eating disorder patients and schizophrenic patients. And it was written beautifully. It's really good prose. Lindner unfortunately died at the age of, I think, 42, only two years after the book was published, so it never became as famous as it deserves. And then uh, my favorite contemporary one, uh, Schopenhauer's Porcupines by Deborah Lupnitz, another five-story book about five completely different psychoanalytic treatments, adults, children, couples, and so on. Again, beautifully written with a lot of humor. Contemporary approach to this is quite different than writing case studies. It is recordings, audio or preferably video, ideally with two cameras, one on the face of the patient, the other on the face, face of the analyst, and then analyzing second by second what was going in there. Who is saying what, when, what happens with uh, the eye contact, what happens with the breathing, what happens with the rhythm of their communication, does non-verbal communication match verbal communication, and so on and so on. Not many people like this when they are in the position of a clinician who should be recorded. Even some of the most famous researchers do not like to be recorded themselves. But this is a, a contemporary approach that is replacing case studies. Now case studies, it is my impression at least, belong to the field of literature more and recording and coding of various sorts is more a research approach. 